Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on the latest addition to the Variant and Criterion dungeon series, and that of Mount Rockon. Now, the first Variant and Criterion, the Sildene Subterrain, was a pretty good addition to the game. The Variant had all these different branching paths and bosses, a little secret for those who were willing to go through and figure out all the hints, or Google them online. And then the Criterion took some of those bosses and made a genuinely challenging four-man piece of content and then amps it up by making sure you are consistent with those mechanics on the savage difficulty testing your mitigation your outgoing damage and of course your ability to do the mechanics that you learn in normal mode it had a lot of good things going for it but also a lot of shortcomings and unfortunately the headline of this video tells you all you really need to know the new variant criterion when mount rock on is more of the same all of the good is still good and unfortunately all of the bad is still bad. And I'll theorize as to why that is the case a bit later in this video. Now, because it is more of the same, the only things I can really add commentary to with Mount Rock on is the actual execution of the aesthetic and the boss mechanics, and of course, the music. Now, the variant version for Mount Rock on felt a little bit better balanced than the variant dungeon for the Sildene Subterrain. What I mean by that is the dungeon is dynamically scaling. If you enter with one to four people in variant, it will scale depending on the actual number of people, plus you have actions that you can use that ease that quite a bit. Mount Rockon definitely felt like it was on the easier side. I initially did it with four, but upon testing it being solo, it felt very similar, I suppose, being best in slot or not even best in slot on a job, and just feeling like it had an easier time. That could have also just been because, you know, I've done a variant already, so maybe I have some expectation as to what to do, but it's not like the mechanics or the dungeon or the concept of it are much different or were any difficult in the first place. So that's just my own personal feeling that this one was a little bit better back balanced around the solo experience and still feels pretty much the same when you go in with four people. I also felt like they made this dungeon a little bit easier to understand if you were just trying to solve it without any hints. Actually, coincidentally, I figured out how to get the secret final 12th ending on my very first run, I didn't get it exactly right, but I basically said the thing that I was gonna have to do and then had to put the rest of the pieces together. Later, I started receiving some hints and then I realized, oh, so that's what it was. Even my group was like, you actually pretty much got it right on our very first run. So that would have never happened in the first one. The first one, you had to be very diligent with reading the hints and the tips in order to figure it out. And that is the case again here. You will figure it out the same way, but it felt more intuitive to try to figure out all the different paths of this after you were running through it. Even if you knew them in advance, it would feel kind of just like, you know, the obvious choices were there and it was just a matter of figuring it out. Of course, Mount Rockon is gorgeous. I love the slow Kugane remix that is actually used for the music in there. And all of the bosses are once again, a decent, I guess, dungeon style boss. You know, none of them are, I'm not gonna sing any praises for dungeon difficulty bosses, but that doesn't mean they aren't showing some levels of creativity or fun, whether it be for the solo experience or for the group experience. It's one of those things that just kind of works well, regardless of which one you're actually doing. So again, the quality of the variant dungeon, really good. And the reward structure for variant for the most part is also really good. There's multiple minions, there's multiple triple triad cards, there's a parasol, there's things you can buy with the potters in case you didn't get them from the actual chest. There's all sorts of systems in place to make it so that even if you do finish all 12 runs, you might wanna go back and at least attempt to farm some things instead of buying them off the market board, or if you don't care about those things, sell them on the market board. It still does have the problem, I feel, of being one of those things you kind of go through maybe those 12 runs and then you maybe never see it again. One thing I was hoping for was some form of kind of linearized version that we could get with both Sildene Subterrain and this, where it just forces you down a path if you queue into it with the duty finder and to do some sort of variant roulette. I would like to see these dungeons not kind of just left to be assets that people can do, you know, again, those 12 times and then leave them alone or just only do them if they're bored or need a refresher on lore. I'd love to see stuff like this worked in regularly. And to no one's surprise, I wish stuff like this was just more regular in the duty finder itself. Like what if the variant dungeons, it, it picks a random path. When you queue in, you get a you get it in a roulette, and then you have to do whatever path it gives you, and then you know that's your roulette for the day. 
you know, I, I would love that as a shakeup, and I'm not someone who generally advocates for stuff with dungeons at all. So the fact that even I want that is kind of a big surprise to me. So that's one of my only major criticisms. It, you know, it's got a decent number of tomes for the number of times you have to do it. It's got decent enough rewards in there that are cosmetic. Um, obviously, they could still do a little bit better in that regard, but we're going to save that discussion mostly for Criterion itself. So very once again, big thumbs up. Love the story. Love the entries. Love the design. Love the music. It's a win across almost all aboard. It's like 95% towards being exactly what I would want it to be. Then we move over to Criterion, which you can get after only finishing a single path for Variant. And once again, Criterion is an adequate four-player challenge being added to Final Fantasy XIV. It is really, really good. Once again, the trash is threatening. There's gimmicks to the trash here in both the first and second pulls. The bosses are all creative, aesthetically fun, a little chaotic, and the music is phenomenal. It is once again a remix of the Kugane theme, something that the original Sildene Subterrain did too, where they took the desert, the song of that is called Desert Sun. It's another remix of some old DOS stuff. But this Kugane remix is top of the line. And I couldn't be happier. I'm so glad that at least with the Criterions, if I'm going to be in there for extended periods of time, they have such good music. And I'm so glad to have that. But Unfortunately, there isn't too much else to say because the rest of Criterion, the structure of the content, is something that is largely the same. You'll go in, you'll get four coins for clearing. Maybe you luck out and get like the mount or something at the very end, but otherwise you're really just farming it for most likely the mount, the orchestrion, and the framer kit. And the framer kit wasn't that impressive when I looked at you know what it offered as an option. So that was kind of unfortunate as well. But it would take 25 runs to get the mount unless you get lucky and get it early. And I really, really think that Criterion Normal is where they are dropping the ball the most with the reward structure. Criterion is not to be confused with other piece of content. It is high-end content. You can do it in crafted gear and something closer to like a minimum item level. So it's something akin to like a P9, P10S. Honestly, I mean, all of Pandemonium can be done with basically you know, full crafted gear or all Pandemonium Anabasios. And I mean, as Fidelis too, you know, like on release, it can all be done with the gear that you have on day one. Plus you'll pick up a few pieces. And with it being kind of, at least I feel that equivalency in challenge to gear ratio, it really deserves rewards that are structured around that. I would love an alternate means of gearing up for people who maybe don't want to do eight man content. And that was a mistake. The first criterion made it as once again, a stake, a mistake stake. Sorry, I guess I'm hungry that the second one makes. And I have a theory as to why that is up till now. I thought they were just afraid of putting rewards in this, of putting any sort of gear. And I think that may have been the initial problem with the first criterion with the second one. I'm willing to bet we have a Eureka Pagos style problem here. Now, for those who weren't around when Eureka first came out, Onimos was like, okay, and there was some feedback, but, but when Pagos came out, it didn't go over well with anybody. They said that they basically had already locked in all of the design aspects for Pagos while, you know, after Onimos had come out or even before Onimos had come out. So with that in mind, they basically didn't take any feedback and instead applied that feedback to Pyros and Pyros ended up being an incredibly loved piece of content. Now Pagos has been adjusted and changed and they have made it better, but that's, you can't really do the same sort of adjustment here with Criterion. It's not the same type of content. So what I think happened is they had already decided that this was going to be the way it is. These were the rewards it was going to have a long time ago and they didn't change it because that's what they already had in the plan and there was pretty much no going back. I think... The most telling thing is going to be the third Criterion Dungeon, because if that's the same, I think that's a problem, because by that point, realistically, with this being two patches apart, this, in my opinion, could have applied feedback, but the third one absolutely should be able to apply feedback, or they should, because it's going to be the end of the expansion, not be afraid to experiment with ideas for new gearing options or new reward structure or anything like that. There's nothing to lose at that point. The expansion is coming to an end. Heck, in my opinion, there's nothing to lose now because it's not like there's a third ultimate or any sort of major content that we, you know, at least that we know about, unless they're keeping some huge secret from us. Uh, that we need to be prepared for. We need to be concerned about weekly lockouts and loot restrictions. Like, there's, there's nothing, you know? So, realistically, this should be a no-brainer, in my opinion. So, I would actually love to hear Yoshi P comment 
on why Criterion has the reward structure that it has. I'm hoping it's something he brings up at some point during FanFest, potentially during the live letter regarding 6.5 part one, because we are supposed to get a third Criterion going into, hey, phone, be quiet. I'm in the middle of recording. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it is a 6.5 part one live letter, which means that it, you know there is a Criterion in the third. They told us there's a third Criterion dungeon coming out a long time ago. Uh, that they should have some commentary on it if they're going to bring it up again. So that's my only hope, because if they can fix this one mistake, I think they have a perfectly serviceable piece of content that I think they could write into at least two or three major patches out of any expansion and get a lot of mileage out of it, a lot of gameplay out of it. It is so much easier to convince three people to do these high-end content fights that are five or six minutes a piece in a dungeon that has three of them and some trash pulls in between than it is to try and convince seven people or organize seven people at that to do an, a super high-end raid and a lot of people are more nervous in those types of settings. The more people there are, just, it services another type of player and it services the players that were are already being serviced by eight-man hardcore content as well. So I think it only has the opportunity to expand the type of people who are even willing to jump into this style of content or capture its own audience that is not being captured in other places. So that is once again, the huge failing of criteria. The rewards are not good enough. The mount is really cool. And I didn't even mention, but the variant mount I actually think it's cooler than the Criterion Mount in this particular... Actually, I thought that way about the last one, too. The Silky Mount was way cooler than the Throne. Here, it's not, like, way cooler, but it's certainly cooler. Not to mention that the Variant Mount has the music from the normal mode, which is super relaxing and sounds great, too. So, you know, at least I got the music right on the mount. You know, so at least that. But all the same, really high-quality fights, really high-quality aesthetics. Thought they did a fantastic job with the dungeon but who knows when I'll do it again. That's the honest truth. And then you amp it up and we come to the third thing, Criterion Savage, another Mount Rock on Savage. Same problems as another Sildian Subterrain Savage. It is ultimately the exact same mechanics with more damage, like the trash mobs one-shot you if you get hit by anything. The And they also auto-attack way harder and their AOEs do more damage. So it's way stricter. Everything has more health. Uh, you have to be perfect with the mechanics because there's permadeath and there's a hard enrage on the whole dungeon on top of the individual enrages on the actual bosses themselves. Uh, now, we do have the added quality of life of being able to see the enrage timer when this one is out, uh, something we didn't have for the other where you just had to kind of keep an eye on your actual timer. So there has been some quality of life to Savage since then. But once again, it is the exact same mechanics, just more damage, permadeath, all that stuff. So it's just a 24-ish minute you know, consistency check, consistency and overall, you know, role performance. You need the mitigation, you need the healing, you need the damage is the bottom line. So with all that in mind, I mean, what else is there to really say other than the rewards are just as sad? I mean, at least the housing item looks cooler this time, but somebody brought this up to me. They had another huge failing. The Criterion rewards have both been indoor housing items. We just got outdoor uh, housing items in the Island Sanctuary. Why are they not outdoor? Think about how much more awesome they would be. It would be like 10 times more valuable if they did that, but they didn't. They're both indoor. So I guess they're just going in my apartment next to each other and they're going to call it a day at that point. Uh, it's just, and then or materia, you know, you get the one housing item or materia. That's, that's all you're really doing. It's just something's missing. Like it, to, the thing is for me, while well, yes, maybe my theory is true where they had already allocated the resources and determined that they were just going to do these very simple things for this. So there was no time to initiate, to, to incorporate feedback while simultaneously working on the 6.3 ultimate and the 6.3 MSQ and the 6.4 and the 6.4 rate, like well, along, all, alongside all that. Maybe, maybe that's the case. Regardless, somebody thought that the Savage rewards were okay initially when they were planning it twice in a row which is scary as a whole. So there's that as well. And some people want Savage to have gear upgrades as well. I'm not opposed to that, but Savage should at the very least give you the coins from normal mode as well, because it doesn't. You can't even make progress, uh, progress towards the mount while doing Savage. Um, and then if normal mode were to have, you know, upgrade materials or whatnot, you'd expect Savage to drop them too. So it's one of those things where Savage just has its own separate rewards and they aren't good enough. Like Ultimate has just weapons, the title, and of course the prestige of doing it. Uh, but Ultimate itself is also a whole new encounter. It's a whole different hurdle. And this is a bunch of the same encounters, but the only hurdle is doing them without dying. Um, and the title's not as good. I think it's like Ascendant Ascetic in these. And then the, the housing item, like those things 
aren't convincing enough to get someone to make that extra jump to not experience something that is brand new, but to just experience something that's just going to challenge them that little bit more and challenge a potential skill set, which is the one thing this does really well. If you're looking for a training ground for consistency for ultimate, this is a really good low man way of doing it. I said the same thing about another Sildean subterrain savage, but a standalone content, not very good. So this is going to go the same way. You're basically never going to see it after this week. Um, and that's really sad because once again, the dungeon is great. I really hope some people take some time during the big downtime before 7.0 to revisit Criterion Normal at the very least. Maybe revisit Criterion Savage if they didn't get around to either of them before. But it is what it is. You got to call a spade for a spade. It's more of the good and more of the bad at the same time. And I really hope that's not the case with the third one because I don't want them to get the impression that people don't want this content. The impression needs to be that people want it, but they want a better reason for doing it. And that's not the only thing they slipped up with this patch, but they've been slipping up a lot with reward structure as they've tried new things, as they've moved the relic away from things as well into just this tombstone grind, which we'll talk about in a whole separate video. But it is what it is. We just have to accept it for what it is. And I'm telling you that I'm not happy with it. I pun it both intended and not intended at the same, but I'm not, I'm not content with it. I'm not going to sit here and defend it is all I'm saying. I'm just going to try to rationalize it as best I can. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the new variant and Criterion and Criterion Savages. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section of the video below. If you haven't even done it, but you still want to, you know, I don't know, just to talk about it. <laughs> Go right ahead in the comment section. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you. I got a ton of videos still coming out for 6.45 stuff, so keep an eye out for all of them. Uh, I'm in no rush to get it all done because we've got a long wait till 7.0. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.